today I will talk to you about nanoparticle synthesis on chip. So it's going to be a short presentation, just give you a bit of uh, overview of um, what can be done on that subject. Before starting, I wanted to give you a bit of presentation about myself uh, to tell you what I did before coming to, to Elvisys and uh, starting this project. So I'm Belgian uh, <laughs> originally. For my studies, I did a bachelor in engineering, which was very general, and uh, at Université Catholique de Louvain in Belgium still. And then I did a double master degree in collaboration with Polytechnique Montréal in Canada. So the first year I studied in, in physics engineering in Belgium, and then the two years after that, I went to Montreal to do a biomedical engineering master. And I had the opportunity to follow some microfluidic courses as well, which was very interesting. And that's part of the reason why I ended up uh, in Elvisis. Um, and for two years, I was able to um, integrate a research laboratory and to conduct a research project on was about functionalizing gold nanoparticles um, for in vitro breast cancer diagnosis. So I was able to work with cell culture, biochemistry, and nanoparticles, which was a very rewarding experience. And just a few words about me. I love hiking, nature, road trips, which is a bit difficult now due to the containment. And I have two dogs. Yeah, here they are, super cute. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so... To talk to you about nanoparticle synthesis and chip, I wanted to firstly um, present you the differences between uh, producing them in batch or producing them in microfluidic flow reactors or microreactors. So uh, when you use batch techniques, it's, um, it's a little bit easier and it's at least easier to mass produce the nanoparticles. This is one of the biggest uh, advantage. It's very easy to scale out the um, production, um, but uh, on the other hand, you have broad size um, distribution generally, and you have lower mass in heat transfer. It's quite difficult to have a homogeneous mixing in your solution. And you have poor batch to batch reproducibility. And that is a very critical aspect because if you want to use your nanoparticles, for example, in biomedical applications, in, for in vivo studies, you need to have a very good batch to batch repro reproducibility for commercialization. So Microfluidic flow reactors um, overcome many of these uh, drawbacks, uh, such as they, they provide a narrow size distribution for uh, your nanoparticles. Um, you have a better, a higher mass in heat transfer. So along with a, a better mixing in your, in your solutions, um, that leads also to higher reproducibility and high throughput. Although um, the drawback is that you, it's kind of difficult to mass produce nanoparticles with microfluidics, starting with the problem of mass produ producing the, the chips, as well as the production rate of the, the nanoparticles on chip uh, itself. Um, and the, the, only, the other drawback is that you have fairly low control over particle shape. So with many microfluidics flow reactors, you will be able to um, produce spherical uh, nanoparticles, but it's uh, a bit more difficult to produce uh, other kind of shape. Uh, for example, star-like uh, star nanoparticles, uh, tubular or um, square, I don't know. So that's uh, another little uh, disadvantage. Um, before telling you of how we can do it, um, produce them on chip, I, I have to talk to you about how, in general, nanoparticles are done, um, <laughs> uh, hard created. So here I will skip um, the, the, the part on top-down approaches because top-down approaches, you basically take a big material, a bulk material, and you break it down into smaller pieces to create the nanoparticles. And for obvious reasons, this is not very suitable for um, microfluidics. So I will focus on bottom-up approach, which is also called self-assembly. Um, so it starts uh, basically with when you mix your, rea your reagents at the beginning and your nanoparticles start to nucleate. So you obviously you have to reach certain conditions in your in your solution, so that happens. But you you get to have some really small nanoparticles uh, that we can call uh, seeds. And the second stage is the growth. So your more and more nanoparticle uh, material will be added on your nanoparticle, and they will they will grow um, in bigger size. And it's very important to note here that these two stages have to be temporarily. Um, separated. It's very important uh, to have narrow size distribution because if you have nanoparticles that are nucleating at the same time that some of them 
are growing, at the end you will have different sizes of nanoparticles and you will have a broad size distributions and that we don't want. <laughs> so it's very important to keep them separate and with microfluidics, one of the advantage is that they can also be separated um, spatially. So you can have the nucleation of your nanoparticle that, that is happening at the beginning of the channels, for example, and the growth that is happening on the, at a later stage, later on in your channels. And so the last stage is the, um, when you have the formation of stable nanoparticles and they don't grow anymore. Uh, they can be stabilized by surfactants, uh, ions or, or polymers or other uh, ligands. So this you have at this stage, you have no more growing nanoparticles and they, they are stable so they don't agglomerate with each other. Um, in microfluidics, basically, you have a few ways to achieve this, um, a few strategies. So the first one is to use uh, continuous laminar flow microreactors. This is a very simple design. It's easy to manipulate. Uh, as you can see, you basically have some reagents flowing uh, alongside. You have some mixing modules to, to ensure uh, your reaction is, is doing well. Uh, the, the drawback is that you have um, dispersion uh, in your fluid due to the velocity profile. So in, in microchannels, you have your, your velocities have a parabolic profile. So that can lead to dispersion and could affect the, the quality of your nanoparticles in the end. And you have also the problem with uh, that, that your reagents and your product are in contact with the channel's walls. So this is a problem, especially if you're using, um, let's say, solvents that are incompatible with the material, or uh, if your nanoparticle can sometimes diffuse in, uh, in the material, especially with PDMS, for example. Uh, and the other problem is that the nanoparticles can also stick on the walls, and you, that can lead to clogging and all sorts of problems. So that's uh, something we want to avoid. So the other option is to use segmented flow. So you use uh, gas bubbles to uh, create small segments of, um, of fluid. And in these small segments, you will have better mixing, lower dispersion. So that's all some of the problems, but you still have contact with the channels walls. So it's not perfect. Um, so the, the third uh, option, and many of you I think are in great acquainted with uh, these designs is droplet based micro reactors. So here you're able to com compartmentalize your reaction in the droplets. Uh, you don't have the problem of the contamination with the wall. So that's um, a, a very good <laughs> point, solving point. Um, but the drawback is that it can be really tricky to add reagents after the droplets are formed. So if you need to quench your reaction, if you need to add some uh, some ligands or some 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 other uh, reagent at at the later stage after the the droplets are formed, it can be quite tricky. Try, quite tricky, sorry. So um, this is sometimes difficult. And also, I would say that droplet-based uh, macroreactors are often used to produce larger polymeric nanoparticles, uh, particles. So more at the micrometer uh, size. Um, but in order to choose the right design for your nanoparticles, you have to define some technical aspects. So what type of nanoparticles you want to use, uh, you want to produce? Is it inorganic, so metallic, silver, gold, um, or quantum dots, silica? Or is it organic um, with polymers, for example, PLGA, ketosan, or a composite of, of both, um, inorganic or organic components? Um, also, a parameter that you have to define is what size do you need? Do you need uh, large nanoparticles, very small ones, and it, that will really affect the choice of the design you're going to, to use. And then once you decided on that, you need to uh, define the reaction conditions. Um, the flow rate of your uh, fluids will have a really a high impact on the nanoparticle size and on the outcome. So this is a very important parameter. And it also influenced, I mean, goes along with the mixing. This is, it's very important to, to ensure a very good mixing in your in your solution and all throughout your reaction. And for that, the reaction temperature can have uh, also an influence, especially for inorganic nanoparticles. So sometimes they need a very high uh, temperature to nucleate and to be made. The reaction time is also important to be defined. Uh, and, and this also can be let's say, integrated in the channel length. So the collection channel, uh, let's say, um, because your, your nanoparticle will grow for a certain amount of time on a certain uh, let's say distance in your channel. So you can say, okay, I want to make a, a smaller nanoparticles. I will make a short collection channel so they don't grow for uh, too long. 
so all of this has to be defined, and then you need to find uh, to decide on what stabilizers you you're going to use uh, and are suitable for your nanoparticles. Is it ligands, polymers, ions, etc. And then once this is defined, um, then I mean, for me, at least for me, I think we need to find the, the visualization and the analysis uh, tools that are available to characterize your nanoparticles that you have. Otherwise, I mean, you can see them uh, with your eyes. So you can you can use optical detection that is mainly for inorganic um, nanoparticles. For example, some 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 of them uh, have high scattering um, effects. So you can see them with the backscattering microscopy, for example. You can use also absorbance reading to know the concentration of your nanoparticles in your solution. But these two are, are quite, uh, I think, difficult to implement um, at Elvisys. So, the, but there is really one tool that is, um, I mean, mostly used in, in all nanoparticle characterization lab is dynamic light scattering. So this is a tool to measure the size of your nanoparticle. And this is very useful, especially because you can do it in line with your tip. So you can, I mean, characterize a nanoparticle right after they are produced. So I think this is a great uh, advantage. Uh, and I think I will use uh, this um, mainly this characterization tool, um, but elsewhere, uh, not at, at Elvisys. But um, yeah, this is very useful. Um, so for, for my part, I will uh, focus on organic uh, nanoparticles because I found that they are uh, easier to um, to fabricate. They have easier de uh, devices. They don't need high temperature for for their production. And to give you an example, you can produce them with very simple design. Here, it's in a 2D hydrodynamic flow focusing device. So, uh, in brief, you add the polymer um, in an organic solvent plus drugs if you want to encapsulate drugs in your nanoparticles inside here, the, the, the center inlet. And then you add water and surfactants at the uh, other inlet. And basically here at the cross-shaped cross junction, you will have the, um, the water and surfactant that will squeeze the polymer uh, solution uh, and that will um, enhance greatly the mixing by diffusion and that will reduce the mixing time. And this is really what is needed for the nanoprecipitation of the polymers. And that is why your nanoparticles will start to nucleate and grow later on in, your, uh, in this channel. Um, the surfactant that is present in the water will be uh, there for stabilizing your nanoparticles. So in the end, you will have ready-made nanoparticles with drug encapsulated and uh, surfactant stabilized. So it's, it's very easy. You can tune and play with the flow rates to tune the size. So I will start by trying this, uh, this design. So to give you um, just a um, very general timeline, uh, approximative, because this, <laughs> due to the containment, it's probably not going to be um, three months. Um, but of what I intend to do in order to write a small application note on nanoparticle synthesis on chip. So here I'm, I'm at this stage, uh, the design of the experiment. Uh, so I will uh, use a, a similar a design uh, fashion as the one I previously previously uh, showed you, a uh, chip with a single channel outlet. I will make the list of materials and reagents that I need for PLG nanoparticles. And I will do some CFD simulation, for example, to see what the effect of the flow rates um, and this all I can do at home. Uh, and then while I'll be, when I'll be able, able to go back to the lab, I'll be able to fabricate the chip and start making uh, the nanoparticles. Um, and then I will be able to analyze them and see if uh, it worked well. Uh, if not, I will have some troubleshooting to do. Um, uh, but I hope, yeah, I guess I will have to do some anyway. <laughs> um, and at the, the next stage, I will optimize my setup so I can play with the PLGA composition to have different size of nanoparticles. Um, I can also optimize the flow rates uh, precisely, especially with uh, this is um, um, Aveflow um, uh, instruments. And I can also try, if everything goes well, to parallelize my, my setup so that I can have a higher production rates. That would be really good. And with all, with all that, I can already write a nice application note, but it would be also nice to try with different materials um, because here I will mainly use PDMS for, for the chip. Um, and I, I could use FlexDim and Fluoroflex. That would be, um, I think, a great thing to do. Uh, and then, yeah, I will write the application notes. Hopefully it will work and it will be useful for people. So yeah, that's it. Um, those are my references. Uh, thank you all for attending this uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have questions, uh, please shoot. <laughs>